welcome back to Two Idiots Build a Battleship. And we are currently in the Prime Meridian. Um, this one is going to be a one shot, sort of filmed in one take episode. Um, the ship is complete. It's actually already being built in the series right now. So this is more of a wrap up covering the technical elements behind the ship and what we've actually done for some of the solutions regarding lighting, welders and so on. Uh, and also just a few of the changes we did. So let's get back to our cockpit. Now this is a live ship. We're outside of creative mode right now. We do have invulnerable turned on, but there's a really fairly good chance that we could get attacked while we do this. So you may get to see this thing in action at the time. So just to start, this is the cockpit. We've changed the lighting. We've gone more for kind of a vaporwave type theme. So we're kind of like purples and pinks. So the way the lighting works here, if you place the lighting around there, it actually reflects on the screens, on the transparent screens. So it kind of tints that color. Now we've also got a feature in here in place whereby if we vent this area, I've got my helmet closed. So I can open these airlocks. We vent this area this lighting changes color. And just so you can see it from here, the way it tints these screens, just because the lighting is shining on the lettering, actually turns these screens red. So it's quite easy from a pilot's point of view to actually see whether you vent in. So if like there's a puncher hole anywhere around here or the doors are open, you can quite clearly see that. So we'll cover eventually how we did that. If you see in a moment, once we regain, everything returns back to normal, so it does right itself. Now we've got a hatch back here, we saw this in a previous, so... This is the way down into the bottom here. Now, we might make some changes to the build during this episode, but they probably will have to be repeated in the series because this ship is already down on the black projector being built, so... Let's just see how this one goes. So. If we find our way through here, we've changed some colors, made things a little bit more uh, aesthetic. There's not so much in the way of lighting around this area, so it is very much uh, an engineering section, with the main focus being on the battery statuses. And around here, we have access to the backs of the batteries for repair, and that's mirrored on the other side. Through here we've smoothed out this whole area a little bit so it just looks a bit nicer. We have statuses on the screens, so the port hanger I'm going to be adding later on. So I've done like half of this and then the other side I'm just going to do while we're waiting for speed ship to build. So I need something to sort of do once we're in the series. This was done using the automatic LCDs 2 script and the custom data looks like this. So we're using property balls, so prop balls, calling out the groups, well, the, the, the item, starboard hangar door one. We only need to call out one of the hangar doors because they're all in sync. So one's open, they're all open. Whether it's open, the hangar, open, close. So that's the way the prop ball works, actually. And then the welders, it's probably clearer to see how that works there. So we're looking at welder 29. We're using the value on off. Welders is the name I'm calling it on the uh, status screen. And then the statuses can be on or off. And it looks like that. So as you can see there, the hangar door is closed. The welders are currently off. So through the hangar doors. Now, We've added a horizontal connector here for horizontally connecting ships. There is room around here to actually modify this um, on demand. We painted this area gold to cover the welder area. And as you can see, these welders are actually off. Button to turn the welders on. Hang on, what does that actually do? Oh, that's the button to turn the welders off. Yeah, emergency button in red, welders on. And as you can see again, the lighting changes color to indicate that the welders are now live and dangerous. And returns back to normal when the welders are safe again. Ventilation for this area, because if you notice, it's currently 
Oh, I think we have a uh, oxygen bug. Interesting. Or we don't have oxygen in the tank. There's a very good chance we do not have oxygen in the tank right now. Let's uh, check our O2 tanks. We have oxygen. Okay. Oh, here we go. Vents on depressurized mode. That's something we'll have to be aware of when we come to actually use this ship. So, ventilation comes through here from that empty space out there. That keeps the vents out of view, it sort of keeps things nice and tidy. With the new blocks coming out, we may be able to actually integrate more vents in this, but that's how that goes. Bottom button is for the hangar doors. And that gives us a good view for the outside. I still need to add door scripts. We just had one written using AI to help write it. Uh, a little bit of chat GPT there, but we'll get to that in the series. So that's the hangers, that's done. Now, if I continue down here, we've added a bit of a wall here to sort of help with air tightness and to make sure everything's sort of like sealed properly. It looks a little neater as well. So this is the technical section. So what we've done is we've added plenty of timer blocks. Most of these are not used right now, but we will find functions for them sooner or later. We have our programmable blocks. Now, originally I had these glassed off, but with new programmable block types coming in the new patch that's coming out, I might want to change these out. So we've left them open for the time being and air tightness is not a problem in here. So here we have the LCD provisioning scripts. That's basically automatic LCDs too. We have our light governor, which I'll come to in a moment. And we have a spare programmable block there, which will probably be used for something along the inventory management, maybe using Izzy's inventory manager. If we want to go down that route, I'm not sure yet. Lightning governor. That's a script that looks something along the lines of this. It's basically Izzy's light color changer. And the way this works is You'll use a command like this using the group name of the lights and the RGB color value. You trigger the programmable block with that value in. So, for example, how to trigger a programmable block with a value on it. If I set up actions on here and then look for a programmable block, so we'll just use any for now, you will there see run with a default argument and then you can just type in that command to run the programmable block with that script so the way that's actually working right now when we when the actually i'm better off showing you so back to the hangar we have a vent on the wall here and the vent basically has a set of actions option. This is vanilla behavior. The first option is for when the room goes from not pressurized to pressurized and that'll run the programmable block with the argument for turning the lights white. And the second one will be for when the room goes from pressurized to not pressurized. So when you open a hangar door or you get a breach and that will run the programmable block for a light color change. And we have a little bit of a cheat sheet here for the buttons because they're kind of important. So we're going to open the hangar doors with yellow button two. And you'll see what happens. So when that went to yellow, the lights around here, we had the command to turn in yellow. The reason why I chose yellow was because when you turn the welders on, you need to have a different color. And the problem was with the welders 
on or off and these are open you open but you don't know if the welders are on because it's very hard to see the tips of the welders whether they're lit up or not in red light so for non-weldery situations we call it yellow so you can quite easily see that these are off so right now that's that if I turn the welders off we go back to white Alert over. Close the hangar doors. It should stay white once the hangar doors are closed. So there's that niche situation where if you change the state of one while the other's still in like an emergency state, it will set everything back to white because that's what it's told to do. There's no and functionality on there, but again, that's where the new um, event controller may help quite a lot. But the main thing is though is like if the welders are on we have this emergency red situation and here you see this is the reason why we went yellow if you then open the hangar doors while the welders are on you can still clearly see that they are on we could have some separate lights in there for the welders so we can keep some reds Okay, close the hangar doors. And these lights should go back to white, but you should still be able to see that the world actually. Wait for that to repressurize. We're still low O2, which is why we're yellow. But you can still see that the welders are on. Welds off, now safe. Within here, we have our Guardian T4 beam control. It doesn't really do much. It's just kind of cool. So we've got it there. So that's how we're handling light colors programmable block with is his light management script on and we've also made a few changes around here as well so I'll go back to the upstairs we're not going to use the emergency hatch this can be like a ship tour as well so upstairs we've airtighted this area and we've blocked that off so it, this is a separate airlock from up to down prior room this is through here. Our medical area, we've simplified that a little bit, making it easier to access. We are going to add rooms and things to these, like, you know, quarters and such to this area. There's plenty of room to do so. We've tidied this bit up. I don't think we needed the uh, access to inventory right here. It's kind of a bit pointless. And to be honest, we could create an access to inventory anywhere else on here. So we could actually place a cargo or here or here. But generally speaking, this area, it's a bit of a vulnerable area anyway, because that's like two layers of armor up there. But this whole area protects the important stuff down below. So that's upstairs. We've added a bit of a walkway here. So this is to stop you from walking into the thruster. This is not a safe distance, but if you were docked here, generally speaking, they're not moving. Now we've changed the color scheme a little bit as well. We're kind of going with this whole vaporwave theme. So we've got the kind of cyan blue thrusters here mixed in with the sort of pinkish purple vaporwave type lights. And then the orange beam laser at the front. We've also added these vents. So the heat vents, which respond to power use. I think we're going to change the color of those because at the moment these are kind of the default orange. So we're going to go with like, keep the vaporwave theme going on here. And I think also in game, we're going to properly put a gradient across this. 
we have access to our cargo from outside. It's also a little bit of a safe zone. We have our major weapons. This is the first proper close-up lock. Again, more of those vents at the back there. Keeping with the slightly boxy theme, it's kind of cool. The whole thing works. Another thing we're going to change is these. I'm not a massive fan of these gears. It's only really going to land on moons and asteroids, but I think I want to have the large mag plates instead. To just have one front, one back. Just to keep things nice and sleek. So we'll probably change those. Our rail guns. Now to explain this. This is our targeting screen. With a camera behind it. And we'll show you that in action shortly. Shields. i place that there because it's kind of cool. A few other changes I'm thinking we might make is we may actually take out some of these armor blocks here and place some airtight hanger doors in so they square this off and have it so that they can come up and then across the top here we may make a little change and sort of add a bit of a bump up here we might be moving that and add some hanger door blocks here as well so that we can actually like lock down the bridge really hard we're also going to have a secondary bridge on the lower deck so that emergency hatch down there, we're going to have a secondary command seat down there that we can just like switch over to if things go wrong. But I mean, ideally, I mean, a lot of this won't be necessary because this system has like mega shields on it. So let's have a look for the shield modulator controller actually. So yeah, we've got a 9 million HP shield, which is 18 times stronger than the Condor. So only really the toughest of enemies are going to get through this. Now I have had encounters before with pretty high HP shields and like being ripped to pieces. So we do have to consider that. Here you can see the uh, heat vents working. Kind of want to change the color. So let's see. Yeah, it's quite easy to do this. So we could have them go from a kind of a cool blue color. So colour at minimum load. So take all the red out. Pop a bit of green in. Yeah, let's go like halfway green. And a ton of blue. Colour at maximum load. Keep the red in. Add a load of blue. Take the green out. Pop the intensity up. see kind of how it would look at full power and uh, see the intensity decreases you get that 20% there so that's that um, I believe insert page up to copy What we'll do is we'll group them all up and then we'll control them all at once. So do that from here. Heat vents. That's all the heat vents. So minimal load is half green, all blue for a kind of there we are, for a cyan colour. Maximal load, all red, all blue. Take most of the green out. Yeah. Pop radius up. Increase the intensity. Power dependency. To about 20%. Now all the vents on the ship should do some pretty cool shit. Which will match that. So let's give that a little test. So. Whoopsie. Now 
Now we do have an airlock here. I'm just keeping it easy by doing that. So you see the vents aren't doing anything right now, but as soon as you start chewing power up. That's really cool. That really works for the vaporwave theme. Right, let's find some trouble to get into and then... So we do have... In fact, what I'm going to do... I'm going to add the... Um, I'm just going to save this. Exit out to the menu. I'm going to add some uh, mod in this. And this is how you add mods to a survival game for those people that are very new. So we're in creative. We're going to go to survival actually. We were in creative, that's crazy. Mods. And this is most of what we're actually using in the actual series. So if anybody wants to sort of replicate what we're using in the series, we have that. So we're gonna add I think we're going to go with a cert for this. I think let's go for a real challenge. Uh, module encounter systems can go in. Corruption. Let's make things very difficult. And then we need the. We need to give them better weapons. So I think I need to subscribe to that one. Okay, and we're back, and we've just. Uh, and what we're looking for and added it, Web NPC weapon upgrade. So we'll add that one to the list as well. So that should do the trick. Now the ones that are not in this list that we are using in the game, we're also using the AQD vanilla ore distribution. That puts the ores further down in the ground and spreads them out over different planets so you can't get them all in one place. Uh, we're also using the Assertive Combat Systems mod, which is there. We've got a few other little bits and pieces like retractable landing gear and some cockpit replacements, but I'm not going to use that in this just for the moment, so let's leave that in. Okay, and we're back in. So right, first thing I need to do, if I do anything, I need to make sure we're actually getting some power in this thing. So. So down to the, we have a cargo pipe port right there. So shift F10 to bring up the uh, things, two containers into that container. Mm, we'll add about 100, it's plenty. It's always a targeted container. That should keep the ship going for a little bit. Uh, we could probably also do with some rounds for our weapons. So we will need 30 millimeter rounds. So we're here, we've got antennas turned on, which is probably a very bad idea, so I'm going to turn them off. Well, oh, I'll turn them off if we see a hacker drone. But basically now we just have to wait for the bad guys to turn up. If 
Right, so let's see what the maximum jump range is on this. So we're talking about in series that we should have around about 1500 jump range. Ideally, and speed's going to have to double this jump twice to meet that. Let's see how close I am to that. Very close, 1400, that'll do. shield scraping here. Alright, we need to bring the big guns into there.
really are taking the battering. They're getting very close to overheating. Shield HP. Okay, so it's like nearly halved my shield HP so far. 90% overheated, so there's a good chance of it blowing. Need to take out that. H2 tank. Come on, rail guns. We've also got these side weapons here which I'm not bringing to bear because they're for purely for flanking. As you can see now. And they're designed not to get tied up with targets at the front. So if you watch. That's interesting. Yeah, I think uh, we can call that a successful test of the Prime Meridian. Um, yeah, so we've got our lighting system here, all tied into the vents. We have our, the same system in our hangars, 
Uh, we also have our cleaner piping and decoration ready for something more to come in here. We can do that during the series. And we have a lighting scheme that is already built in here but with further modifications we know we're going to make when it's actually in the game. So, oops, these vents for example. So yeah, we're going to do more of these uh, build videos over time as we come up with more ideas. Probably some more mod introductions as well. But the next time you see me will be when we're actually getting the materials to build this actually in the series so like and subscribe for much more if you haven't already and thank you very much if you already have and I will see you next time